This is part two of our oceanography introduction lecture series and where we talk mostly about the ocean basins. On the part one, we discussed the basic ocean geography. We talked about the oceans of the world, what is a sea and how is it different from an ocean. We talked about bays and gulfs and capes and peninsulas. And we also started addressing a little bit of the history of oceanography as a field of study. And we're going to take it out from there as we talked about the idea that the real birth of oceanography was early, late in the 18th century with a Challenger expedition where a group of over 200 scientists joined the crew of the HMS Challenger, which went out to study the currents, the tides, the shape of the ocean floor, and study a lot of different things about the ocean. And so the fathers of, 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 of um, oceanography would be Prince Albert and Matthew Morey, especially Matthew Morey, which is considered the, the father of modern oceanography. And we also talk about the fact that since then, the, and since the beginning really of ocean fare and ocean travel, the o seas have been big, big battlefields, both historically in things like the Persian Greek War and, and since recently in World War II and even beyond, uh, the seas have always been the, the site of uh, major battles and that's actually a lot of developments on oceanography technology came from these uh, battles for example the sonar which we'll talk about later we also talk about the fact that uh, Alfred Wagner a 20th century scientist studying the ocean floor uh, uh, well it was a scientist after him that actually studied the ocean floor to prove his theory of, of, of a continental drift and Wagner was not the one that studied the ocean floor, but it was by studying the ocean floor that the continental drift theory of Ocean Wagner became part of, of our geology as well. So as you see, the seas are also part of the 20th century geology studies. And we also talked about modern oceanography, which made things, starting with, with the HMS Challenger, but now we have things like advanced ships, which are studying the oceans as well. Now, who actually sponsors the study of the oceans. Mostly nowadays you have government navies and things like the Coast Guard or the Navy and like I just said ocean ex expedition of launching ships and uh, also the fighting was what led to most advancements in the oceanography studies. That's why they even wanted to know about currents. It's because of commerce and because of, of battling. And so uh, things like fishing industries, things like the um, uh, shipping industries and things like the warfare industry is what actually sponsored at first the advancements of oceanography. But nowadays we also have universities and private companies which are funding the research of the oceans. And there are basically a lot of fields within oceanography. One of them is hydrography, which is basically studying the currents and the tides and things like that. We'll talk about that on our third lecture series about this. Another one is navigation, and that's definitely very important. We use, it's a, we use a mixture of geography, geology, and astronomy, and oceanography in, in the aspect of oceanography. We're not going to get into much of that in earth space science. There's also paleont paleontology, which is the study of the ocean floor and the ocean fossils in the oceans. And that's also obviously in the land, but there's ocean paleontology as well. There's ocean geography. We mentioned a little bit in the first video. And there's also the study of the ocean water, which is ocean chemistry and physics. And uh, it's actually the study of the ocean chemical composition and physical composition of the ocean water. And there's also finally marine biology, which is the uh, living aspect of the ocean. Um, and so what are, I want to focus next on the, on the tools which have been used in the 20th century for the study of oceanography. And in the screen, you see the first most important set of tools, which are oceanography ships. It all started with the HMS Challenger in the 1800s, was the first expedition of scientists to study the oceans. But nowadays, we have these advanced oceanography ships with tall drilling structures in the middle of them, which are, can be used to send uh, probes down to the bottom of the ocean and to pick up specimens off the ocean floor. They also usually have uh, helipads on them so they can get, get supplies to and from the, the boat without necessarily having to dock. The helicopter brings them supplies. You also have um, submarines in some of these ships as well. And you see, and they also have sonars, absolutely, being used on those ships. And we are, we're, we're talking about the um, two of the major ships. You see them in here. On the left side, you see Chikyu, which is the most advanced oceanography ship ever launched. It's a Japanese ship from... Uh, that is very, very advanced, and you see, actually see a, uh, 
a breakdown of the different parts of it here on the right side. And you also have the Joydis Revolution, which is a French oceanography ship. And these are leaders in the research of things. And any one of these ships, it's actually using all of the oceanography tools, which I'll be discussing next. They deploy buoys, they talk to satellites, they have divers, they have submersibles, they use sonar, they drill for ocean core sediments, they use all the tools which I'm going to be talking about next. And so these are the oceanography ships since the beginning and, and, and now still are the, base, are the basics, are the hard corners of oceanography research. All right, so one of the tools that these scientists use are buoys. Now buoys are devices which float at the surface of the ocean and they actually are attached to the bottom of the ocean with anchors or uh, hooks to the bottom of the ocean, as you see in the top right there, or in the top of bottom left. And these hooks will weight the buoy down and lock it in place so that it's always collecting data from one specific location of the ocean. And, and uh, buoys have all sorts of, 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 uh, of, of, the, of uh, functions. There are buoys which serve to detect tsunamis, and you see an example of, a, of the system to detect tsunamis on the top right hand corner, where the buoy actually talks to the satellite and to, the, to, a, to a sensor on the bottom of the ocean. And by talking to the satellite and sensor on the bottom of the ocean, it records the height of the water, both by, the, by getting the distance between the, the buoy and the satellite and by getting the distance between the buoy and the bottom of the ocean. And that way it records pressure and height changes in the ocean which can be used to actually determine whether or not a very strong wave is coming. And that's what sets up the initial warnings of a tsunami following uh, an earthquake. And uh, buoys can also detect things like salinity of the water. They can detect the temperature of the water. And you can see how, uh, look at the top right left corner here, that on the, the buoy can actually have sensors attached to the buoy stretching down at different, different depths so that the buoy doesn't only measure the surface, but it measures at different depths below the surface, the temperature, salinity, the, the currents, the waves, and things like that. And then the buoy will, will transmit this data uh, to, to the satellites uh, and be powered by solar panels. And it also has meteorological sensors sitting in the buoy, things like anemometers and, and wind vanes and uh, bar barometers. And basically, it's a weather slash oceanography station sitting in the middle of the ocean. And you also have other buoys, buoys that serve as markers for territory purposes, buoys that serve for markers for fishing territory, buoys that serve for markers of, of someone who's uh, diving or, or fishing equipment that be, has been deployed. So buoys have a lot of functions on an oceanography. And, there are, and there's actually thousands of them deployed across the oceans of the world constantly detecting data to send back to the land where we are studying the oceans. So buoys are definitely a very important tool used by scientists. Another important tool is satellites. And you see here several examples of weather satellites and oceanography satellites. For example, in the top left corner, you have the Aqua satellite, which was sent to study the oceans, the land, and the ice covering of the world. Also, you have the, uh, the Aquarius satellite, which also measure the, uh, the ocean's salinity level to, because salinity is very important for, for currents. We'll talk about that soon. And so it study the water cycle, it study the circulation of the oceans. And then you have the uh, ATREX, which is the, actually an airplane system that was sent to study the high upper stratosphere water vapor, which is tied to oceanography because the water vapor typically comes from the oceans. Uh, you have TOPAX which is, or Poseidon, which are a satellite that was sent out to study the El Nino effect. It studied a, a lot of things, including the uh, ocean depth level, ocean light li level, evaporation, and a lot of other things that they did to study the actual changes in the ocean due to the El Nino effect. Um, also, we have the Quick Scat or the Sea Winds satellite, which is used sent out to study the wind patterns in the oceans and how storms are generated because of these wind patterns. And you see both of them there, the sea scat and the, and the uh, sea winds. That On the top you have the sea scat and sea winds. And you see a hurricane, which is definitely an uh, ocean-related wind pattern. Uh, you also have the sea star, which was sent out to study the color of the oceans, which can tell us a lot about the ocean, especially in terms of the productivity and the life that's in the oceans. Uh, you also have the sea sat uh, satellite, which was sent to study the 
surface temperature, the winds, the currents, the water vapor, and things like that. You have the Operation Ice Bridge, which is a, a, a conjunction of, of airplanes and the ice set satellite, which was study, sent out to study the ice covers of, 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 of glaciers and the ocean covers on the, on the, on the shelves, both of the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. And then you also have, most more recently, the Jason-1 Oceanography Satellite, which incorporates much of what previous satellites have done to study the oceanography in general. It studies salinity, wind pressure, um, currents, uh, water depth, and all, water vapor production, wave height, and all sorts of things. So as you can see, another good device to study oceanography, especially in the late 21st, 20th century and into the 21st century, is the use of satellites. Another thing is diving. Diving is when humans go deep into the water to study, but diving has its limitations. Um, well, there's different kinds of diving. You have snorkeling, and you see a lady here doing the snorkeling with the, with the dolphin. And snorkeling, of course, is limited because you have to stay at the surface so that you can get the, the oxygen from the surface. So that's only at the surface level that you're going to do. And you can only do that to examine uh, lower depths. Then you also have free diving, which is diving without any equipment. And competition divers can dive up to like 200 meters now, that's what I mean. like 100 meters in uh, diving. In it. But you don't, uh, the obviously, uh, limitations of that, uh, including nitrogen bubble poisoning, because you have nitrogen in your blood because you breathe nitrogen in the air. And that actually, when you go too deep, it forms bubbles in your bloodstream that can cause all sorts of problems and sickness. It's called a diver's sickness. And uh, it can cause heart attacks and serious death and dementia and all kinds of things like that. So... Lots of problems with diving and coming back up too fast so that those bubbles will form. Then you have actual scuba diving, which is when you use scuba gear with the, and you take the oxygen with you and you can go really deep with that. In fact, professional divers, which work in oil rigs to weld the oil rigs under, under water, go extremely deep with things like that. And there's two types of, of deep divers. There are deep divers that take their own scuba gear and, uh, and there's also deep divers which uh, have helmets and connections with tubes to the surface and they don't take their air supply with them but their air supply is brought from the surface through piping and the, the ones that go really deep are usually like that and but there's always limitations for human diving because the pressure of the ocean gets so high that even with awesome gear you're going to have problems and also the, the problem of nitrogen poisoning bubbles and so that sickness is very dangerous and so diving has its limitations. Uh, each one of them has its limitations. Scuba diving, for example, uh, you have the limitation of you can't be there forever because you have to take a certain supply that's going to run out and you have to have enough supply to slowly go back up So because you can't go back up too fast because of the poisoning. And so there's limitations there. There's also limitations on on, on the uh, diving with the just like without any device, you know, just like the... Free diving, obviously, we don't have uh, air supply, so you can only dive for as long as you can have an air supply, so five minutes of diving maximum. And then if, you, if you're actually using the, the scope, you can only be at the surface. And if you're connected to the boat, you can't go too far and you, you need to rely on the boat in order to dive. And even then, the pressure might be too high if you go too deep. And so diving has its limitations. So how do we study the deep oceans if diving has its limitations? Well, there's a lot of ways to study the deep oceans. And I'm going to continue from here on the next video uh, where I'll talk about other devices which are used by scientists to study the deep oceans.